Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Glitchy Skipper from Igor Vasiliev. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. And if you would like to participate in the giveaway, please do check the instruction in the video description. Make sure also that the winners have not been announced yet. Okay, let's start. This first video is going to be an introduction and then I will go and record additional videos where I will explain each control of the application. So we are inside the AUM. Let's start to create an audio channel and uh, let's load a uh, glitchy scaper as a, a audio source. Okay, and there it is. Let me also say that this is a universal app. So it works on the Mac, it works on your iPad, on iOS as well. It works as a standalone, it works as an audio unit, like in this case, it supports the interrupt, etc, etc. As you can see, it is actually the usual interface, very nice, from Igor Vasiliev. If you're familiar with uh, his other application, well, you will find these uh, straightforward as well in terms of controls. In this first video, I'm going to give you an overview of the controls and I'm going to um, show you uh, what it sounds like and what you can do. It is a rhythm machine. It creates um, glitches, uh, patterns and scape as well. So really nice to create and generate new ideas. So how does it work? So first of all, up here you have your uh, preset. So if you double click, Quickly, you will access the list of preset, which of course you can select. Or if you just click where it says in it, you go inside the screen here, where, you, where again you can select the presets here. You can mark one, for example, like this one as a favorite. And you can see the exclamation mark at the front of the name. Click again on, on favorite to reset it. You can delete one, rename one, create a new one, save it, and also set it. I.e., if you select one, then you link to click on set to actually load it. Okay, so it works in, in the way that you have six generators here and you have sequences with um, uh, dual layers as well, which is really nice. Again, here you have buttons to actually move to the previous preset, the next one, save, copy, and also this button here where you can have access to additional settings for the application, the mapping also for MIDI as well here, which is really nice. Okay, and you have a question mark here which, where you access the nice description of um, well, the help, nice description of the application. You can start uh, as an audio unit, uh, the application here, clicking on start, or you can click on the transport control of AUM or another host that you are using. And as, as you can see, it's starting to work. You hear, here you see in the middle, um, verticals um, section, the one on the top, uh, sorry, on the left hand side is your output. And then if you click here on the arrow, you can move to the next one, which is your input. And then if you click again, this is cycles between input and output. If you're using the standalone version, you can, you will have a button up here for BPM. And when you enable that, you see the BPM settings actually here. That is why in the description in, in the help, you actually, it says that the switch is between input, output, and also BPM. But of course, in this case, I'm using it as an audio unit, so you don't see the BPM because the BPM are actually mandated by the host in this case. Okay, and then here you see a number of uh, generators. There are six. And then um, underneath each one of these vertical sections, you have a mute button. So these first one on the left mute everything. And then each mute button under each generator will mute that corresponding generator. So let me show you how it works. So here on the main, you can also scroll to a different um, or move to a different parts of the generator. This is the main one where you adjust the level, the, um, the channel um, panoramic as well. You can create uh, sequences, uh, sequences and uh, adjust the tone as well or create a tone as well based on the parameters which is here and the same you can create sequences based on those parameters that you can select here then you can move to other part of uh, the generator this is the sequencer part with different parameters then the tone part and then the glitch part 
the space where you can add also effects. And then, of course, you go back to the main one. And you, of course, could use the hard on the left to go the other way if you prefer. Okay, and in terms of controls, it works as the other application. So in this particular case, you have a, uh, you are acting on the internal, uh, on the external control, which is the level. And then you can one single click, and you go inside the the second parameter where you can adjust the the uh, channel left and right. If you double click quickly, it will reset that. If you click only once, it move to the external parameter, the one which is uh, signed posted here on the left hand side. Okay, so let's uh, um, start. And now um, you don't hear anything because the volume by default on the any preset is down to zero. It says minus 100. So let me adjust it up. And now you hear um, a sound. So um, Glitchscaper can produce uh, sounds using the internal tone generators, but I can also use audio input, which I will show you as well later on. Um, so now I can click, for example, on Make Sequences, and um, it will create another sequence based on this parameter, and the same on the tone. The tone has parameters which also depends on the sequences, so um, is uh, recommended that you first create a sequence and then you create a tone. So let's try a bit. Unmute. And of course, you can continue like that and you can uh, um, start additional generators. So let's have a, a little bit of fun. So as you can hear, you can create very interesting ideas. So this is how you use it in in um, practically using the internal generators. Okay, but you can also use it uh, um, as a, an audio input to record the audio input, and then of course uh, play around uh, also the tone generators, the inside ones. So let's, for example, remove Glitchscaper from there. Let's uh, load. Uh, for example, why not? Let's load um, uh, Digistick. So we load Digistick like so. And let's create um, a simple drum pattern. Okay, so we scroll down and we create something um, like so. Let's click play. Perfect, that is how it sounds. And now let's load uh, Glitchy uh, Skip. Scaper, glitch scaper, and um, now if you click play, you will not hear uh, Digistick 2, but um, this is where we have to make some adjustments. So let's go on the first uh, generator here. Let's move to the tone section, like so. And when it says tone under here, you can click again, it says noise, and then click again, it says input, right? So let's go back to the main um, section of the generator. We can increase the volume. Let's make some adjustment and don't worry about them uh, too much um, for now. I will explain them in other tutorials. And there you have it. You have the input coming from Digistick 2, which is going through the first uh, tone generator. Okay, But in this case, instead of using the internal tone, we're actually using that uh, rhythm from Digistick. Now let's add uh, some other generators using the internal uh, sound generators. Okay. Oh, 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 oh,
So as you can hear, you can have a lot of fun. Again, I will explain each of the different controls as I go along through the tutorials. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.